Hello you multi, melodious maraudingers, and thank you to Hender Scipio, I hope I got that right, uh, 7407 for providing the malt mention. And the malt mention, which always starts at the beginning of one of my reviews, uh, basically is an introduction to another quality spirit review moment, which usually takes between 15 and 20 minutes. So if you're in no rush and you're not just skimming through the little shorties and TikTok, and if you want to slow things down so that you've actually get something more meaningful at the end of your viewing experience, why don't you stick around for one of my in-depth whiskey reviews? And my review today is of a Scotch single malt whiskey from the Isle of Isla, home of peated single malt whiskies. It's off the west coast of Scotland. It's a small distillery. In fact, it's a classic example of a farm distillery, a farm that's been converted into a distillery. And in fact, it gathers in the barley from, a, from its own area. And um, on a number of occasions, it will turn local barley into whiskey. Uh, and that's always a good thing because with local indigenous varieties of barley, you tend to get a different array, not just of flavors, but of sensations. So there we go, off to a good start. I've been taking this very slowly. I have been sipping this, and not a lot of it by the way, because you can see the bottle's virtually full. I've been sipping little tiny tastes of this all throughout the summer, which has been the last four months, simply because I actually prefer peated whiskey in winter time where I am. Now I'm in the middle of the Irish Sea in the Northern Hemisphere and it's a kind of mystical mist covered land uh, where if you go to the highest hill on, on the island you can see Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales and you can also see heaven and hell. Absolutely. You can also see for absolute miles around uh, across the Irish Sea and if you go north further enough um, sandwiched between Northern Ireland and, and the west of Scotland there's a channel there called the North West Channel if you go up there uh, you will soon come across Isla and that's the home of this distillery I have a long history with Kilhoman um, it's been a complex history there's times that I walked away from it because it wasn't giving any age statements, but I've come back to it recently because I'm, I'm more keen for the value that non-age statement whiskies provide so long as they are well made and also the fact that some age stated whiskies aren't really delivering the age anymore that they should be, in my opinion. So a wee bit of history here. This is Ralphie Review 996 by the way. And it's, I've come along, um, the reason I mention that is because I've come a long, long way from ra review number 62, which was in 2009, in which I sampled some new make spirit from this distillery that only just opened and only just got up and running. So this is a relatively young distillery. And it was later in Ralphie review 76 that I sampled and reviewed the inaugural bottling, which I was hugely impressed with despite its youthfulness. And I gave it a whacking great 89 out of 100 because in those days I did give higher marks generally. But it wasn't until, let me see, Ralphie Review 131 in 2010. And the Review 131 is a three part visit and tour of Kilhoman Distillery with the then manager John, John McMillan. Um, and it, I was very impressed with the intimacy of the distillery. It's very much the opposite of the big corporate experience. 
um, and high blown marketing delivery that you'll get from the likes of Macallan, for example, we're really looking at something which is much more tactile and much more easy to connect and engage with. A small family owned distillery who are keeping to the traditionals, traditions and importantly, and this is so important, they're actually delivering their product as integrity bottlings. So here on this Macher Bay, which I've never reviewed before, it's bottled at 46% and it states in the front of the label, uh, non-chill filtered and no colour added. Um, it goes on the back to tell you some interesting practical information that uh, Macher Bay is a vatting of 90% bourbon cask matured spirit and 10% Oloroso cask matured spirit. And you do find, particularly with younger whiskies, when you actually combine different casks, you can get something that's the sum of the parts. Um, so you get the distinctiveness of the ex-bourbon casks, the cereal and the vanilla and the custardy notes and the sweeter notes, with the, the raisiny notes and some chocolate notes perhaps that you can get from decent sherry casks. And also on the back of the label of this bottle, and I want to bring it to your attention, you've got a QR code and the QR code will take you to a little video where you can actually see someone connected with the distillery talk about the distillery and introduce the, the bottling to you. So it's all good. Uh, and I must also mention that it comes in a simple box nothing too fancy, nothing over the top, and it just gives you some tangible, unpretentious information which is genuinely useful. So there we go. Before I smell and taste this, I also want to add that of the entire Kilhoman range, this is the most available and most affordable. Right, Teo. Personally, I like the Sanig more. I love the Sanig because of its real toffied complexity, but Macher Bay is a very worthwhile alternative to Laphroaig and Ardbeg in particular, because when we restrict our awareness to just a few mainstream and widely visible uh, single malts that are heavily peated, we tend to get a bit institutionalised them in them and we don't realise how much variety there is out there in the other smaller distillery brands. So what are we getting in the nose here? Steady as we go. Wonderfully creamy, almost confectionery peat. There's quite a sweetness in the nose. You can tell immediately that the first fill bourbon casks, um, the 90% of bourbon casks used in this batching um, are primarily first fill casks because you've got that strong vanilla note and that extra sweetness that you get from the American oak and it works really well. So there's a butterscotch, a toffee, um, a slight caramel, almost fudgy richness, but it's not masking in any way the elemental biscuity um, peat fire, as in peat hearth fire uh, note that you get. And really you have to, when you visit, if you visit Scotland, you have to get a wee bit of peat, right? And get a, put a match to it and burn it a little bit to to actually understand what peat smells like because just picking up a wee lump at the side of the road it'll smell of nothing. It smells of nothing until you actually light it. So make sure you've got your wee uh, blowtorch with you and have a wee sniff of it and make sure once you've finished extinguish any burning um, residue. Don't just leave it burning because you could cause a fire. Just saying. So probably best if you take it down to onto a, a nice sunny sandy beach. There's a slight mint and floral note to this. Elderflower, definitely. Lilies, yes. The mint is a soft mint. It's a soft spearmint. And it's quite complex. It's, I mean, I said spearmint. There is a bit of spearmint in there, but there's other mints in there as well, which make it a little bit complex. First taste, neat.
you just hold it on your tongue delicious sweet luscious so beautiful mouthfeel because it's unchill filtered so it's way ahead of Lagavulin in that respect because all Lagavulin's chill filtered because it's just the habit of the producers the way Lagavulin is at the moment I recommend this ahead of Lagavulin any day any day of the week now it's just a sign of the times and when you're tasting this neat it, it starts off sweet and it ends up kind of crisp and slightly carbony and and slightly camphorous as well so I'm going to add a wee drop of water now give it a couple of minutes and explain one reason why I've taken so long to review this and it's really because my last review was this whiskey heavily peated Kil Kilkerran from Glengyle distillery in Campbelltown uh, and I gave this a very good mark because it's a very good cask strength batch whiskey this is batch 8 uh, so I gave it a really solid mark it deserved it, it's earned it, it's an absolute amazing whiskey but there's one problem Glengyle distillery is small production is limited and although this is a great whiskey it's relatively hard to find outside of Europe so I wanted to kind of balance things off in part of my presenter's responsibilities to bring you Kilhoman um, Macher Bay because it's a really good example of a much more available widely distributed scotch heavily peated single malt when you add water a little bit of lemon oil appears and a little bit of grapefruit juice appears on the nose the sweetness very much intact I'm going to give you advice here when you're adding water don't add much just a little I didn't tell you how much I put in I just scooped in some water but I put in three millilitres so it's half a teaspoon that's all it needs this whiskey if you add too much water will quickly drown it's simply its provenance and its nature so just add a little drop of water a little drop and just leave it sitting for 10 minutes and when you come back there'll be this floral garden aromatic bouquet it's almost as if you've gone into a, a zoological garden which has um, an orchid house because some of these orchids are in very intensely um, perfumed I'm thinking of the not the Paphia Pedlum, it's the one of the other ones that's the hanging ones and I've forgotten because my Latin's not that great um, no it's gone but there's some of these exotic and you really have to find them in May wherever you are because that tends to be the flowering season even under glass and you're getting this delightful slightly peppery now I, I notice I'll talk I'll talk about orchids someday because it's just fascinating to smell orchids they're one of the largest flower genus or plant genus in, in on the planet incredibly diverse and incredibly misunderstood but I've noticed a pattern and I'll share it with you in another video another taste of this before I give the malt mark very good quality indeed for such a heavily peated whiskey it's incredibly articulate in the palate it really gives you some wonderful diverse flavors the floral the toffee the sweet the sour and the sensation range the sweet salt bitter sour that's really interacting and positive with the flavors there's no discord amongst it uh, this is a distillery that has an outstanding signature 
which even now not so many people know about because it's still a relatively small distillery and not actually producing much. But they really know their business and if you're an Isla, let me give you some advice. You really won't learn much by going to Lagavulin Distillery because it's basically fully automated. Um, whereas Kilholman, which isn't that far to travel, relatively, um, just, just gives you such so, so, so much more in terms of the quality of engagement for your tour of the distillery. So keep that in mind. The big brands and the big names, they're out there, they're visible, they're recognisable, but, but, and it's fine for starting with, to their credit. It's good to start with these big, big visible brands, but I recommend you, you graduate to these smaller distillery brands like Kilhomans, Macher Bay and Sanig, because they're, they're very, very good whiskey and they provide a very, very definitive experience of whiskey diversity. Diversity of smell and diversity of flavour. And there you have it. I'm Ralphie. I'm going to give this a mark now. A malt mark. An integrity malt mark. It's very good. Very good indeed. Uh, I was going to give this 83 out of 100. But see for the integrity. The fact that it really is not chill filtered. It's, it's natural colour. You know, 84 out of 100. And that, my dear viewers, is my malt mark. Integrity malt mark. And I hold this up to show you that it is a malt. It's not a blend. It's a malt. A single malt. Pop back again shortly for Ralphie Review 966 Extras. In which I will be talking a little bit more about peated whiskey and I'll be introducing a new concept to you that you possibly haven't thought of before that you're going to find really interesting. There we go. Now where's my little Clivey clicker? Here it is.